You and I are on a mission. We've traveled back in time and we've met a very important person. Let's call him Ben. So he asks us, what do 21st century Americans eat every day? And we look at each other and we say, cheeseburgers. You can spend a few dollars on a value meal cheeseburger or spend literally thousands on a gourmet cheeseburger from a fancy restaurant. How can we have Ben experience a true 21st century cheeseburger? Our time machine has landed us in 1774, and all we have are the clothes on our back. We have to make do with the ingredients we can find here in the late 18th century. They don't know what a cheeseburger is. They don't even know what a sandwich is. So we have a lot of work to do on this. The recipes in this time period don't give us anything very, very close. So we've got to work on the techniques. We got to find the ingredients. We want to make this special. We're going to need a bun. We're going to need some kind of incredible meat patty. We'll need cheese. We'll need some kind of toppings. Got to have a special sauce and it'll need a little something on the side, but we'll get to that later. Some of these ingredients will be easy. Other ones will take some work. Let's start off with the foundation, the bun. We might think it was impossible to find a hamburger bun in this time period, but it turns out from Ben's own writing, we know that he was familiar with something similar. The day he shows up, his first day in Philadelphia, he goes to the baker. He wants to buy a biscuit. They don't have anything like that. He says, give me a three penny loaf. They don't have that either. He says, give me whatever for three pennies. And he gets three big puffy rolls, probably exactly like big hamburger buns. Also, if we look in the paintings of the time period, we'll find pictures of manchet bread and they look exactly like hamburger buns. They even bake them all stuck together so that you have to peel them apart, just like a hamburger bun. The recipe for these buns is just like any other bread. Flour, salt, yeast, water. We let it rise and rise, and then we have our bun. The heart of our cheeseburger is the meat patty. Sounds easy? It's not easy in the 18th century. Ground beef isn't done. Not in the way we think of it, because they didn't invent the meat grinder until the 1840s. What are we gonna find that gets close to that? Well, there's an incredible recipe from Hannah Glass, 1774. It's called Hamburg Sausage. Whoa, Hamburg Sausage. Sounds pretty close, doesn't it? Take a pound of beef, mince it very small with a half a pound of beef suet. This is not going to be a lean patty, right? We're gonna add in pepper and cloves and nutmeg. A great quantity of garlic cut small. Garlic in a recipe in the 18th century, pretty rare. We also have salt and vinegar. We have a glass of wine and a glass of rum. This should be incredible. This is mixing up really well. It uh, smells great and we haven't even started cooking it. I'm excited about that. And you know, we're not gonna add the liquid parts of the recipe because that original recipe was made to go inside of a sausage skin. And this isn't meant to be like that. So we're not gonna need the wine or the rum to go in here. The technique that gets closest to our meat patty in the 18th century was called force meat. They would take meat, they would mince it up very, very small, and then they would put it in a mortar and pestle, and they would grind it until it was almost a pate. Then they would take that, make little meatballs with it, and use it as a garnish. That's about as close as it gets. We want this to be the best burger. That means it's got to have tomatoes. Now that's a major problem here in the 18th century. In North America and in Great Britain, people just didn't eat tomatoes. They thought they were poisonous. Don't ask me why. Maybe it has to do with lead in the plates. Maybe it has to do with them being part of the nightshade family. So thankfully, Ben is someone who reads scientific papers. I found a scientific paper about Jamaica in the 1750s, and it writes about tomatoes. Incredible. It says often used in soups and sauces. 
So Ben Franklin, he's gonna be somebody who's willing to experiment. Other people, maybe not so much, but Ben, he'll try out a tomato. In modern America, a great hamburger needs a great sauce. Now, there's nothing like ketchup in the 18th century, but they certainly have mustard. I wanna make an incredible 18th century mustard that will set this hamburger off. Vinegar sauces in the time period are really simple. We take our mustard seeds and we grind them up with a little bit of vinegar. Sometimes they use just water, but I can't imagine that. I don't know what that would taste like. Uh, we're using something just a little bit different here, and that is we're grinding it with mushroom ketchup. Mushroom ketchup has that tangy base vinegar flavor to it, and I think it's going to make a really, really good mustard sauce for our burger. Oh, I want to see the look on his face when he tastes this. This patty looks really good, but I'm worried about how it's going to cook. It's got different components in it, and it's really, really thick. I'm worried we came all this way. I don't want to mess this up and not have something good for Ben. For our toppings, we've got cheese. We've got a white cheddar. It's really good. We've got tomato. We've got onion. We've got lettuce. And a little bit of that mustard sauce. Oh, I hope Ben loves this. I can't wait till he tries these flavors. This cheeseburger looks amazing. It smells great. I'm really excited to try it. I think Ben is going to love it. Now, I said we had something special coming up to add on to this. So, here they are, curly fries. Yes, curly fries from the Virginia Housewife Cookbook in the early 19th century. This ought to set it off perfectly for Ben. Really good, crazy good. This patty was complicated, but the flavors in it work really well. They blend together and make it incredibly good. And I was really worried about that mustard sauce. It is perfect on this burger. You and I, we did it. We created an unbelievable burger using only the ingredients available in the 18th century. Mm. I love it. You're gonna love it. Ben's gonna love it.